The reason why we have signed agreements is because that's the easiest way for two parties to be on the same page about what's going on and for a third party, like a judge, to be able to enforce the details of that agreement. So do you have to have them? Well, you don't necessarily have to, but you should absolutely have them just from the sake of clarity from understanding what both parties are getting. And then additionally, if you care about any type of protection from liability, there, there are some clauses in there that need to be addressed because eventually something will happen. And if you have that in your agreement, you're protected, right? And that can, that can still come with some issues. But if you don't have it in there, uh, it's going to be a tough time. Welcome to the Bug Bucks podcast, a podcast designed to help you become a bug money millionaire. Today's episode is brought to you by Bug Bucks Plus, the number one course designed to help you start and grow your pest control company. I am your host, Eric Bassett. And of course, I've got your other host, Alan Draper with me. How's it going, Alan? Uh, going good, man. Going good. Great time of year. Just a few weeks before Christmas. Less than <laughs> yep. three. So yeah, uh, good time, man. Good time to spend with the family and the kids. So, oh yeah, dude. You know, by the time this episode drops, we'll be closing in on kind of mid month in December. Hmm. You know, it's a fun time to kind of uh, go through the, the prep season, right? You're kind of right in the middle of the mix. Yeah, things are slowing down for a decent amount of us anyway. Um, and we're actually going to talk about a few things that kind of highlight some of that. But before we dive into today's episode, I just want to remind everybody listening, the best way to receive new episodes is by subscribing to our show on your preferred podcast platform like Apple, Google, Audible, or Spotify. If you love the show, please leave us a rating and a review. One last reminder, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, go to Bug Bucks. That is B-U-G-B-U-X. We've got over 3,700, 3,700 members now, which is crazy. And they're all pest control owners waiting to connect mm -hmm. with you and share their thoughts. That's also the best way for you to share your feedback on our show and have your questions highlighted and discussed here on the podcast. So make sure you find us on Facebook and join the group. All right. And speaking of the Facebook group, you know, we have a brand new member that just popped into the Facebook group and uh, he jumped in, has a great question. He says, uh, Biggest roadblock I have is prepping and getting a service agreement slash contract written up. So if anyone is willing to give me some tips to just cover me and the customers, any help would be appreciated. This comes from William Curtis. So thank you, William, for the question. We're going to kind of dive into a few pro tips here when it comes to service agreements, uh, why they're important. Should you have them? Shouldn't you have them? You know, and uh, maybe some of the little ins and outs of those term agreements, cancellation fees, fun stuff. So, um, Alan, where do you start when it comes to service agreements? What do you think? Yeah. So I, I mean, there's the first thing that I would say is, um, and I know when you start a pest control company, you don't necessarily have a lot of resources, but, mm -hmm. and I would feel a lot more comfortable if he worked with a, an attorney in his state. I don't know what state that he's in, um, mm. to, to, to get that done. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about some must haves. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we first started, our agreement was uh, pretty, it was pretty thin. It was, there wasn't much to it. And part of that was the sales process, right? We were like, well, we don't want a 30 page contract. They feel like they have to give away their first born to do business with us. <laughs> um, but, and I do understand that. But, you know, when you get down the road a little bit, you you need to make sure that your company is protected. So, um, so if you are, you know, you've thought about that, like, hey, maybe I'm not going to include that clause, or or I don't want it to be lengthy because I don't want them to look like, you know, for for it to look like they're signing this huge agreement. Um, I think, and I understand the thought, but I think you have bigger things at play, and um, you know, proof has had some developments recently, and just you know, typical of a pest control company that has a footprint, you know, that, that we have where you start to get a little bit of a target on your back, or you just have more vehicles on the road and more employees. So it's just, it happens with scale. And if you're wanting to scale your pest control company, be thinking about those things right now. And one of those things is, you know, what, what do I have in my agreement? So, um, so let's talk about some some must haves. You you need a choice of law provision in there, mm -hmm. um, and and it's most 
it's most likely going to be the state in which you operate a, a venue choice a lot of attorneys like arbitration uh, mandatory mandatory arbitration clauses so um you know to decrease uh, uh litigation expenses and stuff like that um you probably need a class action waiver in there mm -hmm. um and this is just really bare bones just stuff that um sometimes aren't included in a boilerplate agreement um you you want some um you you want something that addresses the the liability of it um of your pest control services you know done on their property and and things like that and this is why it's important that you work with somebody locally because because some of the things that I've said they may not be allowed or they may require specific language in order to be enforceable so you definitely need to work with a local attorney but you know right off the top of my head those are some things that that need to be in there. The scope of the work needs to be in there. So there's a, there's a couple of things that you want to make really clear with your customers. Um, and it's not just, so these agreements aren't just about liability, although liability is a really big part of it. Um, you want to make sure that um, it's clear what you cover so that, you know, if they get, uh, you know, some wood destroying insects that aren't covered, that it shows in there that, you know, that those weren't covered and they can't go after you for it. And um, just just makes any type of litigation a little easier. Um, you need to be clear with the service schedule within the service agreement. You need to be clear about when they're going to pay. If you have an auto pay feature, um, I think some states require a separate initial or signature on that line. It's not a bad idea. So it's, you know, if they're like, yeah, they're just charging my credit card fraudulently, which we've heard before, you make sure that they they see that. So, um, yeah, that those are kind of some of my initial thoughts, Eric. Yeah, no, and I, I agree with you 100 percent. A lot of that stuff is, like you said, they're critical, crucial. Got to have that stuff in there, um, you know, kind of circling back to the first thing that you said, if if you guys are listening out there and you're thinking about you know, starting a pest control company or I would say in more common scenarios you probably are operating. I would say that you're operating a pest control service. You've got a few customers, um, you know, friends and family in your first, whatever, 25 to 50 people, right? And maybe you, at this point, you have never even had anybody sign a single document, right? And you're kind of thinking about it. Um, go talk to an attorney, right? Just like Alan said, find somebody who can represent companies uh, within your locale, somebody who's licensed, who can give you some of the ins and outs. You know, we we can definitely help connect you um, through the the podcast and through the Facebook group with some really good attorneys. Um, but it's going to be making sure that we find somebody locally in your area that can make this stuff happen. Because just like Alan said, there are some nuances, things you're going to want to have in there, but they differ from yeah. state to state and how they're said and how they're enforced. So that'll be important. Um, one of the things I was going to mention here. Um, when it comes to agreements, um, and me and Alan have talked about this before, if I go to someone's house, you know, and I say, Hey, my name's Eric, I'm with Natura Pest Control, you know, and this is the service I provide, and this is how much it costs, this is how often I'm going to be there, right? You know, does that sound like a plan, right? And they say, Yep, Eric, that sounds great. Um, I would love to quote unquote sign up, right? We shake hands and I leave. We never sign any documents, right? That's a contract, that's an agreement. You know, we, we have a verbal agreement. That's a contract. It's what you would call, uh, you know, it's technically enforceable. The reason why we have signed agreements is because that's the easiest way for two parties to be on the same page about what's going on. And for a third party, like a judge, to be able to enforce the details of that agreement, right? Mm -hmm. So do you have to have them? Well, you don't necessarily have to, but you should absolutely have them just from the sake of clarity, from understanding what both parties are getting, right? And then additionally, if you care about any type of protection from liability, like Alan was saying, there, there are some clauses in there that need to be addressed because eventually something will happen. And if you have that in your agreement, you're protected, right? And that can, that can still come with some issues. But if you don't have it in there, uh, it's going to be a tough time for you, right? So um, a few things that I wanted to touch on. Realistically, first thing you got to think about here is who's the agreement between, 
right? Obviously the pest control company, that's an obvious one, but make sure you have all the customer's information, first name, last name, address, phone number, secondary phone number, email address would be great. And then maybe even a secondary contact person if you wanna have that person down there, right? Um, the other thing I want to have in here is kind of like Alan was saying, what type of service am I getting? Is it general pest? Is it termite? Is it roaches? Does it cover bed bugs? Um, you know, what kind of warranties am I giving you as the customer? Um, what's our guarantee? Do we have a, a limit to our warranty and our guarantee for how often we want to come back and treat in between services, right? Um, how often we're going to be there, whether or not, um, or I should say how we're going to let you know that we're coming, you know, I might have in my agreement, Hey, um, this is our service schedule. We reserve the right to adjust the service schedule accordingly. We'll let you know in this format that we're going to be there. And then we're going to come out and we're going to perform the service, right? I'm, I'm letting them know whether you tell me it's cool or not. I'm telling you where I'm going to be when, and I'm just assuming that you're cool with that, right? So a lot of that stuff has to be outlined. And then of course, if you're going to have any type of term agreement in there, right? So I think a lot of times when people ask this question in Facebook groups, I've seen it pop up all over the place, right? Pest Cemetery, um, our group, and they say, hey, you know, should I do contracts? Yes or no. I think what they're, a lot of times what they're asking is, should I do cancellation fees? Mm. Like, should I, should I hold my customers to term agreements, right? To a specific yeah. term. And that's different. You can have a customer agreement that's month to month or service to service, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't include a specific term agreement. And if you want to have a term agreement, then you have to have a whole lot of uh, this whole other layer of details in it, which has to do with, um, do I require written notice or what type of notice do I require for you to end the relationship and cancel this term? If you cancel this term, who's responsible for the remainder of the agreement that you committed to money wise, right? Um, and then that comes into cancellation fees. So be, without, without, uh, you know, fire hosing everybody listening with all this stuff. Um, one yeah. of the things I just wanted to mention here is just clarity. Okay. If you're asking yourself what needs to be in the agreement, the answer is it needs to be as clear as possible with what both parties are getting and what could happen in the event that this agreement, that one of the parties doesn't want to be part of it anymore. And Alan says this quote all the time. He says, the quickest way to be unfair with someone is to be unclear with them. Yeah. Right. And that goes with employees, it goes with your customers, um, it goes with pretty much everybody. So um, if you want to have a good relationship with your customers, be clear with them. If you want to be clear, make sure your service agreement outlines everything that they need to know. The service agreement is really good. And you, you know, you mentioned that regardless of whether there's a cancellation fee, you need a service agreement. And I agree 100%. Um, because it it does more than just you know, require that they, you know, customer uses your service for a certain amount of time. Um, so one, 100%. And it, it, it does so much more than, um, just bind the parties to certain things. You, you, you know, you're a lot of times an issue will come up like, Hey, I thought you covered carpenter ants if you don't, or I thought mm -hmm. you covered termites. And it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's a really nice thing to be able to say, you know what? That's a great question, Susan. Why don't we pull up the agreement and take a look at it? And then she's like, oh, I didn't know there was an agreement or whatever. It just makes you sound really professional. And, and I hear a lot in the, you know, uh, on social media about, yeah, I don't want to make my customer do this or that. Or <laughs> you got to think of it as, you know, it's a two-way street. You want to make what you're doing for the customer very clear. And you use it as a value build or a value yep. add. So, so there's, you know, all these things to think about. Um, and a great thing from a litigation attorney's perspective is to add things where you've seen problems in the past. So if you had customers that thought there was a termite, um, there was termite coverage in the general service plan, then you may want to think about saying things, you know, having a paragraph, uh, insects, pests, whatever, that are not covered by the service agreement. And then number one, termites. So there's things that, or things that aren't covered, certain service types or um, service strategies or whatever, where you've had issues. Um, because that's, you know, you have experience with that. And a lot of the agreements, like 
You know, if you go to a large corporation and they have a 30 page agreement, a lot of the stuff that's in there, <laughs> it came from litigation. They just did it wrong. And they're like, yep. you know what? We got to put that in the agreement now. And all of a sudden they end up with a 30 page agreement. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's a great way to just make it really clear. Um, some people are like, yeah, I don't want my customers to have to worry about a service agreement. To be honest with you, especially for the smaller companies, this is a great way to show that you have your ducks in a row. Hey, you know what's cool about yes. our company is that we're going to tell you by contract everything that we're going to do to cover you. That's very professional. Yep. And they see a, you know, a, a nicely organized agreement. You're giving yourself credibility um, right off the bat. So they're like, okay, sounds like you know this guy has uh, his ducks in a row and just really great way to add value there. 100%. Yep. And before we move on, uh, real fast, we're going to give a big shout out to one of our sponsors. So if you are looking for a way to drive five-star reviews, employee and customer engagement, and provide additional tips and bonus compensation for your team members, Applause is a platform for you. Applause makes it easy with their streamlined online platform and app. They give your management team clear and detailed reporting and provide competitive leaderboards that drive employee engagement. And these are just a few of the benefits that Applause delivers. To learn more about how Applause can take your company to the next level, visit AppauseHQ.com. And remember to ask about special Bug Bucks Plus discounts. So, um, you know, back to this conversation about service agreements. I love what you said about some of these smaller companies looking more professional when they have something that they can show the customer, right? Um, and again, what, what customers really want is, is clarity. They want confidence. You know, when you, when you have a service agreement with a customer, and I've used lots of different contractors. I mean, I can think about the, the various different projects that I've done um, on my house and, and in other places. Um, and I can tell you that the biggest problem I've ever had had to do with clarity expectations, mm. right? You know, I'm, I'm kind of fuzzy on the details. I thought you were going to do that. And they're like, oh no, we don't handle that part of the project. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me, right? That whole situation can be avoided when you have service agreements with your customer. And for the, right. for the guys out there who are thinking, oh man, I just feel so weird, like asking the customer to sign something like they, it, you know, it's like they, they're so scared that as soon as they pull out a contract, the customer is going to be like, whoa, 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 man. Like, I can't believe this, you know, contracts. Ah. Dude, that's, you got to move past it. I promise. If, if you've sold the service the right way, there's no problem that a customer is going to have with you having some kind of a, a customer agreement, especially if it doesn't necessarily have like a term agreement in it. You know, for us at Natura, we do for all of our new customers, it's a 12 month initial term right? And we do a discount for it. And the way that we pitch it, it's so simple. It's not complicated. It doesn't mm -hmm. have a lot of pressure involved, right? And when we, when we don't make a big deal about it, customers don't make a big deal about it, okay? So if you want to be able yeah, to have these additional they, like, protections... If, if, sorry to cut you off, but they, you know, if, they, if they do bring it up, then you let them know, hey, honestly, this, this agreement is um, just to make sure that you understand my promises to you and I understand your mm -hmm. promises to me, you know, make, make sure yep. that they know that it's, it's a two way street, that it's not all one sided and, and, you know, Hey, Hey Susan, like I've, I've learned over the years that the best way for this relationship to work is for us to both understand where we're coming from and to understand what we offer in exchange for what cost and, um, if you talk to somebody yep. like a human being, um, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll get that, especially if you, you tell them, Hey, this is to protect you too. It's not all one-sided and it is, you shouldn't have an agreement yeah. that's all one-sided there. Sometimes it can be a little tougher to enforce if it's all one-sided. Um, but if it's, you, you know, you including the pricing, you're including the guarantee, great guarantee is a great thing to include in a service agreement. What is your mm -hmm. guarantee? What are the specifics of it? And if you haven't figured that out, maybe now is a great time to to do that in preparation. And and then the last thing that that I would add is make sure you're reviewing your agreements annually. Review them yes. at least once a year with what additional knowledge you gained that year. 
Like, hey, did did we goof something up at somebody's house? Did, you know, what were some of the biggest complaints that we got, the most frequent complaints? And use your your service team, use your customer service and your technicians. Like, hey, what are some things that we need to make more clear with customers? And make sure to review that annually. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, and it's funny, there's been times when we've reviewed our service agreements and um, I just assumed that this was, we had a certain part in it and that's exactly. how we've been operating. And I look at the service agreement and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, we, that's not in there at all. Right. And yeah. I ask everybody else in the room and everyone's shocked. Like, I can't believe we haven't had that thing in it this whole time. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're reviewing all this stuff, you're looking at pricing, you're looking at projections, you're looking at marketing, you're looking at all these other things. Take a peek at the service screen. It takes five minutes. You know, it doesn't take very long. Yeah. Um, and see what needs to be added, adjusted, taken out, maybe. Um, but one other thing I was going to list off, and then we'll we'll get everybody out of here, is don't be afraid to walk through the service agreement with your customer at the point of sale, right? Mm. Um, I, I did this with all the customers I ever sold, and I teach my inside sales teams and other companies to do this. Um, just pull it up, right? And say, hey, I'm just going to walk through this with you. Here's all your information at the top left-hand corner. Make sure that's all accurate. Perfect. Down below, that's your service schedule. Those are when your services are going to occur. That's how much they're going to cost, right? Down below, that's our service guarantee. This is what we promise to do for you in case you still have pest activity. Below that, that's the term that we're doing for your first year. That's the discount that I locked in for you to make sure that we get you the discounted initial service. Below that are some additional terms and conditions about our technicians, the way that we communicate and access to your property. Right down below that, just a line for your signature and a little place for your initials. Have any questions about that? Nope. Great. Go ahead and sign that. I'll get it right back over to me. And then you're good to go. The more confident you are when you walk through that with the customer, the more confident the customer is when you get to the bottom and they go, yeah, I'll, I'll sign it. Sure. Right. So don't be scared about contracts, right? If you're not scared about it, the customer's not going to be scared about it. So just my last thing I wanted to throw out there. Yep. hundred percent. If you're having people go through the agreements, make sure that they understand it. So if a customer says, hey, why is there this provision? Then, mm -hmm. And then they don't need to be an attorney to be able to say, you know what, that's just to cover us in case you were to get termites. Or that's just to make sure that you know, hey, if I want a termite inspection, I'm going to have to either order that separately or call another company. You know, just, yep. um, just, just the kind of the basics uh, of it. Um, and then my last thought, um, hire an attorney. You know, yes. we, in, in the pest control industry, we try to cut corners and we try to save a buck here or two. And as a startup, I a hundred percent get that. But, and there are things like you can take from this conversation or from what people share with you online and take it to your attorney and say, Hey, these are a couple of my ideas. How do we incorporate some of these things into, you know, a legally binding agreement that is appropriate for this state. And I've had, I've run into issues before and I'm a lawyer. So <laughs> get, get some help. This isn't an area where you want to skimp on, but it's not going to cost you 20 grand either. You no. should be able to get something decent for, depending on your state, a few thousand dollars. Um, and it's well worth it, even though that can be a tough pill to swallow. So make sure that you get some professional help that is not somebody in one of these Facebook groups that hasn't done it professionally or thinks you can cut this corner. Um, that being said, there's some great information in bug bucks. So make sure to join the group, make, you know, just, just make sure, you know, and this is general advice regarding anything. When you're talking to somebody online, make sure you know who you're talking with and what, the, what the <laughs> background is there. Because yes. I don't like when bug guys give legal advice and I don't like when lawyers tell me which products I shouldn't use on my house uh, <laughs> when I'm doing pest control. So it, it works both ways. So um, if you have additional questions, if you're looking for attorney, an attorney, uh, reach out to us. We have referrals in multiple states. Um, I have a great referral in the state of Arizona if you're looking for an attorney. Um, <laughs> and just make sure you're doing things right. You're doing things right right now. Um, because mm -hmm. they'll pay off in in the long run and save you some headaches that you really don't want to deal with. So um, last thought, and uh, we'll catch you next time.
If you enjoyed today's episode, please show your support by subscribing and leaving us a five-star rating. Thank you, and we'll catch you on next week's episode. 